on Netflix that I would completely recommend. It's just, a, it's just switch my legs. It's a, he was um, a guy, Richard Alpert, who actually has a background from Harvard with Tim Leary. And we all know who Tim Leary is the psychedelic guy who tried to take people like experiment with going to a higher spiritual plane through psychedelics. He was fired from Harvard, was constantly seeking, you know, a higher, being a higher spiritual being, gave up the psychedelics because he went to India and met a guru. And he became this just amazing guy who was all about love. And he just preached love. He had devotees. It seemed like he was almost like Forrest Gump in that in his life, he was surrounded by um, Steve Jobs, celebrities, um, Kennedy, just you name it, like some person in history and they had some kind of interaction. Anyway, I wanted to start today with a f three of his quotes because you could just read his book and you know highlight a million things, but there were a couple of beautiful things. One is, Treat everyone you meet as if they are God in drag. He preached love. Um, and especially today after yesterday's news, it's really like love is just so important. Um, it's important to expect nothing, to take every experience, including the negative ones, as merely steps on the path and to proceed. And the last one is, as we grow in our consciousness, there will be more compassion and more love then the barriers between people, between religions, between nations will begin to fall. Yes, we have to beat down the separateness. So I thought that was really apropos considering the news yesterday. And um, I was just so honored because it was actually the author of the book. So Ram Das, Richard Alpert, um, passed away. And one of his friends, followers, Ramachar Das, also an American guy who went to India and was given a name, um, actually joined us on our call and spoke to us for two hours about Ram Das and told us stories that weren't in the book. So that was great. So let's start, we're gonna warm up today. Um, you know, again, getting our spine ready. So let's inhale as we bring our arms, let your palms kiss, look up at, the, at your hands. No arching of the back yet, just lengthening of the spine. Inhale and exhale and just, you can move around a little bit just to get some space in between the ribs, like the vertebrae, we're getting long. And then exhale, let the arms come down, let them come in front of you. And let's bend at the hip crease, not at the waist. We don't wanna round the back. We wanna keep the back very straight. The neck is long, so it's a complete extension of the spine. You might not come down very far. Let your hands, your fingers be wide, your palms press into the floor as we come with a flat back into a forward bend. And then inhale, get long and exhale. Let yourself round down over your legs. Gently rise, come up, walk yourself back to neutral, bring your hands behind you. As we lean back, look up at the sky, open heart. This is about love and compassion today. Compassion for yourself. Look up at the sky, neck is long. Deep breath in, deep breath out. And come back to center. Hand comes down on your side. If you're on a block, it might be hard to reach down. You might wanna put a block, a block on its lowest setting just so that you're even with your hips. Bring your right hand down onto the block, flat palm. Left hand comes overhead over the ear as you bend and lean towards the right. So, and you might wanna even take your left hand, make sure you're, hold onto your rib cage, make sure your chest is wide, heart is open as you lean to the right. Deep breath in. Every time you inhale, see if you can get your, your spine longer and stronger. And as you exhale, you kind of release and relax into it. Come back to center. Let's do the other side. 
Left hand is down on the block, right arm comes over. You might wanna start out by holding onto the rib cage just to make sure your chest is wide and open. Come overhead and let's lean to the left. Every time you breathe in, tall and strong, out, exhale, just release. Come back to center. Take your right hand behind you, left hand comes to the outside of the right knee. Before you start the twist, take a deep breath in, get tall and strong. And as you release the air, you exhale, you lean, you look over your right shoulder and twist to the right. And again, you take another breath, you get tall, you sort of release the twist gently, and then you go, uh, see if you can go a little bit further into the twist. It's a great way to start the day. This is early for me. But it's a great way to start the day. Cross your arms, bring the left hand behind you, get tall and strong, and look over the left. And the left will be different than the right. And again, Deep breath in, deep breath out. See if you can relax a little bit more, looking over the shoulder. Come back to center. I think today we always do a little bit of breathing. We're gonna just take deep breaths and notice our breaths. And today we're gonna do a little bit of a loving kindness meditation. So I'll try to do it quickly, I don't wanna to spend too much time, I wanna keep moving, but I don't know whether you're familiar with meta meditation, which is um, loving kindness, and this is a very popular one. We breathe in, and as you breathe out, the first loving kindness thought that comes into your head should be about yourself. So you wanna breathe and say May, to yourself, I'll say it, you just keep breathing deeply in and out. May I be happy, may I be healthy, may I be free of suffering, may I live in peace, and may I be blessed with ease. Deep breath in, deep breath out. You might wanna bring your hands to heart center. And then in a loving meditation or a meta meditation, we think about in your mind, Focus on someone that you love, whether it's a friend, a family member, but someone that you love. And it's that person that we're focusing on as we breathe and we think, may you be happy, may you be healthy, may you be free of suffering, may you live in peace, and may your life be blessed with ease. Deep breath in, deep breath out. Now focus on an acquaintance, someone that may not be in your close circle, but someone that you know, someone that you might pass in the supermarket or wherever, someone that you barely know, but is an acquaintance. Focus on that person, take a deep breath in. I think, may you be happy. May you be healthy. May you be free of suffering. May you live in peace and may you be blessed with ease. Deep breath in, deep breath out. Here's the hardest one. I want you to think about someone that you may not like too much for whatever reason. They rub you the wrong way, they did something to hurt you, but we're gonna send them some loving kindness too. So breathe in and think about that person and think, may you be happy. May you be healthy. May you be free of suffering. May you live in peace. And may you, your life be blessed with ease. Deep breath in, deep breath out. And the last one is think about the whole world. Give the world a hug in your mind. May you be happy. May you be healthy. May you be free of suffering. May you live in peace. And may your life be blessed with ease. 
Deep breath in, deep breath out. We just threw a little bit more compassion into the world. Come on to come into table. Knees are under your hips. Wrists are under your shoulders. Fingers are wide. Palm and fingers are all pressing into the floor. Tops of the feet pressing into the floor. Your spine is neutral. There's no sway in the back. You might even want to bring the navel up towards the spine. Your neck is long and straight, actually my hair up so you can see. And we're gonna do some cat cows. I think you know what that is. Um, so you're gonna inhale as you come into cow, which is sink the belly towards the floor. Your chin comes up and then inhale. Well, that was an inhale, exhale, sorry. Bring your navel to the spine, round your back. Tuck the chin for cat and go back and forth with the breath. So you're inhaling for cow, bringing the belly towards the floor, the chin comes up, exhaling for cat. And do about four rounds here. And then bring yourself to neutral, take the right leg back and bring it up hip height. And just think for a second here, this is a balance. So automatically the weight shifted to the left leg. Just make sure your hip, your hip bones, the, the pelvic bones are both parallel to the floor. And then take the left hand and bring it out in front of you. Flex that back foot and reach with the left hand and we're balancing, this is core work. Deep breath in, deep breath out. Don't let that leg come down. You're pressing with the left leg into the, the left foot is pressing into the floor. The right hand is, the palm is pressing in, the fingertips are pressing in. Allow that left hand to come down back under your, under your shoulder and bring the right leg down. Find your even, feel the realignment. Deep breath in, deep breath out, and bring the left foot back. Bring it hip height, flex the foot. Again, take a moment and just make sure that your spine is even, that you feel that core work and can come and bring that right hand out straight in front of you. Your gaze is at the floor, so your neck is long in line with the spine. And again, this is core work and bring the hand down and the foot down to meet it. Come up onto the toes and bring your knees up off the floor. Take your navel and bring it towards the spine. So you're working your core here for crouching tiger. Make sure your chest is wide and your back is not rounded in the back over across the back shoulder blades. And hold that, take a deep breath in, deep breath out. Bring the knees back down, uncurl the toes, bring your hands, walk your hands out in front of you and let your chest sink down to the floor. Your forehead reaches the floor for puppy pose. Your hands are really reaching out. Your fingers are pressed to the floor. So this is not a resting pose the way child is. It's really an active pose. Bring the hands back under the shoulders, lift up for table, curl the toes under and lift to down dog. So this is our first down dog. You can pedal your feet. We're waking up the hamstrings. Don't feel that you have to straighten your legs. Your knees can and probably should be bent. Your tailbone is reaching towards the sky. Your neck is long and loose. So shake your head yes, shake your head no. Make sure your head's relaxed. In yoga, there's always something strengthening and something that's strengthened and something that's relaxed. Here, your neck is relaxed, your head's relaxed, your jaw's relaxed, your arms are reaching long, they're strong, and your legs are strong. Come over and bring your body down towards plank. Bring your navel to the spine. 
work that core and come back to down dog. Inhale and come back to plank. Exhale, down dog. One more time, inhale, plank. And exhale, down dog. And then walk your feet to your hands. And let, let your knees be bent. You can actually allow your stomach, your belly to rest on your thighs. Let your head be loose and stay in a forward bend. We're waking up our hamstrings slowly. We don't, we don't want to wake them up too fast. And slowly roll up. Let your shoulders come back. And we're in mountain pose. So let's make sure our mountain is balanced and we're aligned. I want you to lift your toes up so you engage the front quads of the thighs and the knees will come up. Again, let's do our normal thing where that I love to do with you. Place the big toe down and see if you can place the baby toe down, the pinky toe, and see if you can keep those three toes in the middle lifted. That's a mind-body connection. And then plant all the toes down, spreading them wide and lean forward so you're on the balls of the feet. You don't have to bring the heels up, but you wanna feel the, all your pressure, all your body weight leaning forward. That's not where you wanna be in mountain. Then go back towards your heels and go side to side and then find center where the entire foot is pressed down into the mat and that's where you wanna be. So just make sure you're aligned, your shoulders are over your ribs, which are over your hips, which are over your knees. Hands are, the, the palms are facing front. The arms have, it, it's isometric, it's an isometric, ugh, I can't speak today. It's an isometric exercise. Your arms are strong. And we're gonna do two sun salutation A's. So inhale and bring those arms with the palms kiss. This time, lift at the shoulders without lifting the shoulders to the ears, but just lift your entire spine at the shoulders. And from the top, back, the top of the back, your shoulder blades lean a little back so there's a slight back bend. This is all on an inhale. Exhale, come down. Again, bend the knees, let your belly lean on your thighs. Let your head be loose, we're in a forward bend. Inhale, let those hands slide up the legs. Take your shoulders back, we're in flat back here. Your navel is headed towards the spine. It's a flat back, someone could serve tea on your back. And just remember, your weight is still evenly on all parts of the foot. I just felt myself going towards the ball of my foot. Lean back, make sure your feet are all four sides, pressing into the mat. Exhale and come back down, hands on either side of the feet and come into plank. And then come a little bit forward onto the toes and come into a push up. You can come onto your knees to do that. Push up or chaturanga. Uncurl the feet, press your elbows in towards the body and slowly just a drop, baby cobra. Slight back bend, your gaze is up to the wall right above where the floor and the wall meet. Curl the toes under, come up, tailbone to the sky for down dog. You can pedal your feet, take a breath here. And then walk your feet to your hands. Allow your head to drop. Your knees can be bent. Bring your hands up your calves, shoulders back, flat back. Exhale, come back down, hands on either side of the feet. And this time we're gonna exhale and reverse swan dive our hands so our palms kiss. And again, a slight back bend and release. We'll do that one more time. So this is a warm up, and you'll notice that it's really using all of the movements we did earlier with the seven movements of the spine and cat cow. And then in our flow, 
we use all of these movements that are in sun salutation A and sun salutation B, which is why they're just beautiful warm up exercises. So let's inhale, palms touch, look up, and see if you can maybe do a little bit more of a back bend. Exhale, bring your arms down, forward bend to let your head relax. Inhale, slide those hands up the legs, shoulders back for a flat back. And exhale, come back down, hands on either side of the feet. Now, the way that sun salutation works is this is one long exhale, but feel free to take, because this is a slow class, take a deep breath in and a deep breath out as we slowly bring our legs down to plank. Hold plank. If you want to drop to your knees, you can. Otherwise, lean a little forward. We're coming into chaturanga or push up. So you, your arms bend and you come down slowly, uncurl the feet. And this time, bring the elbows towards the ribs, close to each other. And we're gonna come up to a cobra, full cobra, or you can do baby cobra, come up slightly. The elbows are still bent, but your gaze now is towards where the wall and the ceiling meet. Your thighs are still on the floor. Your hips could be on the floor. Curl the toes under, tailbone to the sky for down dog. Again, pedal the feet. They're really warming up the hamstrings. Our legs might be getting a drop straighter. Deep breath here. This is the resting pose. And let's walk the feet to the hands. Drop your head. Inhale, shoulders back, flat back. Exhale, come back down. Shake your head yes, shake your head no. Again, there's strength and relaxation in every pose. Your head is really relaxed. You're in an inversion right now. And exhale, reverse swan dive your arms. Let your palms touch. Again, a slight back bend. And exhale, arms to your side. Let's do a sun salutation B, so we're really warmed up, and then we have a fun little flow. So again, find your alignment, make sure you're on all four parts of your foot. You might wanna rock forward, rock back, and we're gonna take our arms, swan dive them up, but this time, keep them in a V, and let's sink our tailbone into a chair for chair pose. So in chair pose, of course, this is a great pose for your quads, for your core. You wanna look down, make sure your knees are over the second toe, but you can see your toes as you look down. You don't want the knees to be really out like this. You want them back a little bit and the tailbone sinks. So we're rooting and rising. Our hips are rooted into a chair. So they're headed down into the floor. Our feet are pressing into the floor and our torso and our arms are rising. And then exhale and come back down. Just let the tailbone go up as your torso comes down, your head comes down into a forward bend. Again, relax the head. Inhale, hands go up the legs, flat back. Exhale, hands on either side of the feet. Again, you know this one, plank. You can come onto your knees, chaturanga. Uncurl the feet, bring those elbows close to the body and you can do baby cobra. You can do regular cobra or if your back and your arms are ready, straighten the arms, bring the thighs up so that you're on four points, your hands, your palms, and your, the um, tops of your feet. Everything else is lifted and your gaze is up at the ceiling. <sighs> Deep breath in and out. Curl the toes under, tailbone to the sky, down dog. We're not, we're not resting here. We're taking that right leg up to the sky and then through, you might have to help it to the inside of the front of the, front, of the right wrist. Take the back foot before you rise and turn it so that it's 45 at a 45 degree angle, which will give you a little bit more stability. Keep that front leg bent and come up into warrior one. 
Now it might be easier if your stance is a little bit close, your legs are a little closer together. And this is a balance pose too. It's balance, it's strength. Make sure the front knee is over the second toe. You don't want your knee going in or out. And your torso is face forward. So if you put your hands on your hips for your hip bones, they're both face forward. Hands down on either side of the front foot, come back to plank. So you turn that foot back so it's facing forward and chaturanga. And you could bring your knees down and do knees, chest, chin. Uncurl the toes, elbows close in and either baby cobra, cobra or up dog again. Curl the toes under, tailbone to the sky for down dog. Next time we'll have a rest here, but the left leg comes up and through inside the left wrist. Turn the back foot at a 45 degree angle. Front leg is bent, hips facing forward, torso facing forward, warrior one. You are a warrior, a compassion warrior. And hands on either side of the front foot, back to plank, chaturanga. Up dog or down, up dog, not down. Up dog, cobra, baby cobra, your choice. Curls, toes curl under, down dog. And here's where we rest for three breaths. So take three deep breaths. And when you're ready, walk your feet to your hands. Relax your head. Inhale, halfway, shoulders back, surf T on your back. Exhale, hands down to the floor. And as we inhale, we're gonna take our arms, bring them straight up in front of us and sink back down into that chair position. So check your alignment of your knees over the second toe. Make sure you can see your toes. Sink the hips into the chair as you rise with the torso and the arms. And then just straighten up, exhale, release the hands. Good warm up. I have to change the heat in here. It's pretty hot. <laughs> okay, I've got the vent in the, on the ceiling right on top of me. I guess you can't see it. Okay, ready for a flow? Take a deep breath. We start in mountain. So once again, plant your toes down wide, foot pressing all four parts of the foot, hands out to, to their side. And today is all about compassion. So I want you to keep a very wide chest. Your heart is open. I want you to clasp the hands behind you, which actually opens the chest. Bend the knees a little bit and come in at bend at the hip crease and come into a forward bend with the clasp up above you. So wherever you can raise it to, let your head relax. If you have blocks, make sure they're handy because we're gonna use them in a second. Release the hands, place them on either side of the front feet and take that right foot, bring it back. So you're low to the ground, let the right knee drop to the floor and curl the foot. So we're in a low lunge. Take the blocks if you have them. You might want them on the high level because we're gonna keep our torso as upright as we can. So we're leaning, we're giving ourselves a little hip stretch here, right? Let me see if I can maybe turn so you can see better. We're, you might wanna slide your back leg back so you get more of a stretch. The front ankle is under the knee. And then you want to lean back, straighten that front leg. And this is where you use the blocks and lean, and lean at the hip crease over that front leg for a runner stretch. I bet if we were doing a forward bend now after this, you'd be able to straighten the legs a little bit more. I know I would. Come back, walk the hands, come into the hip stretch into low lunge. And one more time, let's do a runner stretch. When we come back, 
to low lunge, you might wanna place those blocks on their low side towards the inside of that front foot and bring your forearms down. So keep your torso long. You might need a good, a good um, stance between the back leg and the front leg. Bring your forearms down, hug the knee to your shoulder, we're in lizard. Also great hip stretch, quad stretch. Let that front foot lean onto the pinky toe side of the foot. Let the knee drop down a little bit and then bring it back up. Take a couple of deep breaths here. Let your hands come onto the blocks, release the blocks hands on either side of the front foot, curl the back toes under, lift the knee, turn the foot so it's at a 45 degree angle. You might wanna hop it a little closer. Keep that front leg bent, hip bones are facing the front. We're back to where we were in our sun salutation. We're in warrior one. We're gonna take those hands and clasp them behind us again. Chest is open, heart is open. And we're gonna lean to the inside of that front leg into humble warrior. Hands come back up, warrior one. Where we take our hands, prayer position. Okay, here's where it gets a little interesting. We're gonna do some balance poses in the middle of our flow. So your hip, create, your hip bones are facing front or at least trying, not everybody's anatomy is different. Mine's not completely there, but that is the point. You're going to take that back foot and hop it gently up until you put all of your weight onto the left leg as we come into warrior three. Warrior three, you, if you wanna move so that your back leg could be against a wall, that certainly helps. Or if you imagine a wall, it even helps and we're lifting that back leg straight out, of course, right now. <laughs> anyway, straight out, I think I want a wall today. Every day is different. Last night when I was planning this, it was perfect. So that you're in warrior three. Now the arms could be out by your ears, that hurts my shoulders. You can keep your hands in prayer. So we're in warrior three, which is a balance pose. There we go. Hip, hip bones are facing parallel to the floor and then bring your foot down. Actually don't do what I just did. Bring your foot down so that you have another wide stance. Your feet, your back leg is parallel to the edges of the mat and your feet are perpendicular. Front leg is bent, we're in warrior two. So torso is above the hips, rib cage above the hips, shoulders above the rib cage. Your front foot is bent. Your knee is over the second toe. Your feet are parallel. Your front hand is facing the future, back hand in the past. Your chest is wide, but it's facing the side of the room, but your gaze is over the front fingers. Let your right hand come down leg as your left hand comes over for peaceful warrior. Left forearm comes onto the thigh, right arm comes overhead for side angle pose. Bring those arms back to warrior two. Straighten the front leg. Let your fingers reach towards the future as you then tip into triangle. With triangle, you wanna make believe there's a wall behind you so that your entire body is as much on one plane as possible. It always feels a little bit like a back bend to me because you're leaning so that your plane is really two panes of glass. Okay, so take a block, have a block handy here. We're in triangle. You're gonna take that block. You're gonna hop that back leg again. This time you're planting the block. Oh, about a foot from that front toe. And now you're lifting the back leg, hip height, your hands on the block, and you're in half moon. So the hips are stacked. It's a different hip opening. 
Keep your back foot flexed. If you need to be against a wall, that's great. If you can't do it, it's fine. It's a balance pose. It's not meant to be easy. But the more we practice balancing, the less likely we will fall if we lose our balance. So the first one we did was warrior three, hips face down, half moon, hips are stacked. Keep your torso long and gently let that foot come back down. So you're back in warrior two. Legs, straighten the front leg, turn the toes so that they're facing the side of the mat. And we're in wide, a wide angle, wide legged pose. Take your heels, turn them slightly in, do heel toes till, until you're about a little bit more than hip distance apart with the heels, hands at your heart center. And we're going to squat into a yogi squat. Pressing the knees out with your elbows. This is one of the most important positions that there are. This is how people sat before they were chairs. There were chairs. And I think that I read somewhere that you're supposed to sit like this, a yogi for 15 minutes a day. So we'll sit like this for a minute. Let your hands come down on the floor, lift up your tailbone, and we're gonna turn our legs so that we're facing, the toes are facing the front of the mat, hands down, take the front leg, bring it back to meet the back and you're in down dog. Bring your knee, right knee to your nose, right knee up to the sky, right leg up to the sky, I'm sorry, right knee to right wrist, come into pigeon. So you might wanna slide the left leg back. And then pigeon, if there are many ways you can do this, you can take your hands and make a hammock and allow your head to come down and rest into this position. Or if you'd like, let your torso stay upright, bend the left leg behind you, grab it with the left arm. If you wanna grab it with both arms, you can for king pigeon, whatever works for your body, or just come down onto the hammock of your hands and allow yourself to relax in pigeon. All right, hands under shoulders, curl the back toes under, take the back, the front leg to meet the back, down dog, and walk your hands to the front of the mat. Bow into forward bend, and then gently roll up. We have the other side. <laughs> so here we go. Mountain pose, clasp the hands, open the shoulders, open the heart, come into forward bend with clasped hands. You can allow your belly to rest on your thighs. Hands on either side of the front leg. Let the left leg come back, have your blocks handy. Oops. And this is where we have them on the tall side. So you wanna lean into that front leg, get a little bit of a hip stretch, and then lean back and bring your torso back with the blocks and allow yourself to fold into runner stretch. Come back to low lunge. And back to runner stretch. You might wanna bring those blocks onto the low side on the inside of the front foot let your forearms come down and come into lizard. Let your front leg tip over onto the pinky toe side of the foot. Feel that stretch and then bring it back and hug the knee to the shoulders. Take the blocks, remove the blocks. Hands on either side of that front foot. Curl the back toes under. Lift the knee, take the back foot, turn it so it's 45 degrees. You might wanna hop it a little closer as well. And we're gonna come up into warrior one. So your hip creases, the hip bones are both facing the front of the room. Clasp the hands together, bend into the inside of the front leg, humble warrior. Hands release, come back to warrior one. Hands in prayer position. And we're going to hop our way 
into warrior three. So warrior three again, we're on the right leg, standing leg. If you have a wall behind you, your, your head is even with the spine. Spine is long. Press your hands together, it helps. And your foot is flexed in the back, balance pose. Allow that foot to come down, perpendicular to the front leg. Again, we're in warrior two, front leg is bent, over this knee is over the second toe. As if there's a pane of two panes of glass you're between, front hands reaching to the future, back hands in the past, and you are centered. Allow your left hand to slide down the leg as you reach up for peaceful warrior. Deep breath in as you breathe out. Allow that front forearm to come onto the thigh, arm overhead for side angle pose. Come back to warrior two. Straighten the front leg. Allow the arms to reach to the future as you tip down for triangle. Have that block handy. Take a couple of breaths here. You know where we're going. So take that block onto the tall side, about a foot, foot and a few inches. So it would be under your face so that your wrist is under your shoulder as you lift the back leg, hips are stacked for half moon. I'm curious to know which one you find harder, warrior three or half moon. I clearly find warrior three harder. Maybe it's because I have an arm down on the floor. Gently release the leg. Turn the toes so that they're facing the side of the mat. We're in wide angle pose, wide legged pose. Take that block, we'll do something a little different. My, my mat got very crooked here. Um, <laughs> place the block so that it's in the center. I have no center because I'm crooked, but okay. Place the right hand on the block. You're bending at the hip crease. So we're in a flat back sort of position and we're raising the left arm for a twist here. Switch hands so the left hand is on the block and the right arm comes up for a twist. Remove the block and come into a wide legged forward bend. Do a yogi toe hold. So we're taking the index finger and the middle finger, grabbing the big toe on either foot, bending at the elbows and allowing ourselves to just hang in a forward bend here. Release the hands, move your hands towards the right foot, which would be the front of the mat, I would assume. Hands on either side of that front foot, take the front foot down to meet the back foot and you're in down dog. Raise your tailbone to the sky. Let the left foot come up. Let the left knee meet your nose. Left knee back up and left knee to left wrist for pigeon on this side. You can use blocks if you'd like in the front, on the front. Your left leg will feel different and be in a different position than your right. You can try to bend that right leg and grab it. Oops. <laughs> Grab it for king pigeon. My left is definitely different than my right. Hands on either side. You can make a little hammock with your hands. And allow your forehead to rest there for this hip stretch. Hands up on either side. Curl the toes under. Come into down dog. Pedal the feet and come down onto your knees and come into a seated position. So both for Shavasana and for seated, what I'd like you to do if you have two blocks is we'll do a supported fish, which means you're taking your block onto the middle side. So it's sort of like this and putting it right where you're on your so your spine will rest on it about, oh, maybe a few inches below your bra strap and above it. And then the other one comes as a T for your head. So you're gonna lay across those blocks 
allow your head oops, to be on the T-shaped block and allow your shoulders to just your chest to be wide. This is my theme of compassion today. We're gonna to have an open chest over the blocks and allow your hands to rest leaning on your, you know, laying on your elbows, down your forearms, and your palms are facing up for our Shavasana today. We're allowing our heart to be open. And this also is so great as an antidote for sitting in front of a computer or looking at our phones. It's great for our posture. So if you wanna find a soft spot to focus on and gaze, that's okay, or close your eyes and search your body for tension. So you don't wanna be feeling tension under those blocks. You really wanna to try to just relax and drape yourself over the blocks. If this does not feel good, don't do anything that doesn't feel good, remove the blocks and you can just recline in a regular Shavasana pose. You want to stay here. It's a beautiful place to be. Allow yourself to relax. If not, you can start by wiggling your fingers and your toes and then turn yourself onto your right side off the blocks. And you can come and meet me in a seated position when you're ready. So we bring our hands to heart center. I just want to say that I'm grateful and honored that you spent the morning with me. And in yoga, we say namaste, which means that the light in me sees the light in you. And in the words of Ram Das, just I see God and I'm trying to see God in everyone. And so that goes with namaste, right? The light in me sees the light in you. It's a beautiful book if you want to read it, being Ram Das. Watch the movie, the documentary. It's just, it's really heartwarming, especially in the age that we live in. So namaste, thank you, namaste.